activities or outdoor um, you know, outdoor improvements. And we'll see if we get some response then. Any questions about anything else that's on the report? Uh, yeah. uh, item three, your discussions with Cochran and stuff. I mean, did they give you any kind of timetable? No, I, it was hard to kind of judge what all was going to be involved, especially with the, the northwest part of the watershed. Um, so they're hoping to have something back. I think it's going to be about three or four weeks. So we talked to them a couple of weeks ago. We may hear something in, you know, by December. I mean, do they claim any expertise in that type of business, or is that, um, I mean, is that something they do and have done, or? They have done, yeah, they've done that in the past. Uh, they've, they'll look at where the where the creeks go, what what's feeding those creeks, and working its way down to South Gabbery. Um, if I think if they felt they couldn't do it, they would let me know, and then we'd move on to somebody else. I mean, do you think it'd be worth our while to maybe reach out to somebody else? Um, I mean, can we research any engineers that may have that in their uh, portfolio or something that kind of specializes in that? Just, you know, because of the broad range of this and the possible costs I think we could be looking at. I mean, I'd... Well, you my know, first first thought was let's get a price, see what that cost is, and then we would go out and, and see if there was somebody else that you, or if, or if anybody else was out there, and maybe we do the RFQ at that point. Uh, but you know, let's first see what it's going to cost and if the board's going to move forward on it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I don't mind talking to a number of people, but it just takes takes our time throughout the day to do that. Right. I mean, I understand that. I just don't want to go one and done. Uh, and not know we're getting the best bang for our bucks are getting somebody with a lot of expertise in that area because it is a specialty uh, thing. Well, I, I think we have had good results from Cochrane, so I, I, I trust what they do. And I, you know, that's why I don't mind pursuing it with them. But yeah, if you feel uncomfortable just going with them, then we'll, we'll right. pursue others. I mean, we've never used them for something like this, though. So we've always used them for water sewer projects. Yeah. Right. Yeah, since I've been yeah. here. I'd just like to know we're getting our best deal because this is a big deal. Yeah, no, I was just, uh, while we're on the topic, uh, you were asking about other people. Uh, Steve, did, did you talk to anybody at Alliance about, I know you were going to talk to them about stormwater. Yeah, as far as stormwater goes, that's not something. They don't have anybody in there? No. Yeah. Any other questions? All right, with that, we'll move forward. Thank you, Happy. Uh, Jeff, I don't guess Jeff's in the, he's not here tonight. No, he is off on a, uh, uh, something was already planned before he started work here. Mm -hmm. Some sort of fundraiser outside of Louisville, so he is out of town. So you've got the numbers in front of you. Uh, we have updated numbers for Pecana Palooza, which is like about 4,500 people, uh, 35 vendors that were there. Turned out to be a really good day. Veterans Week salute, about 165 people uh, to take the tours. Uh, it was a pretty neat tour. If you, if you haven't had a chance to look at mm -hmm. what they have, it's, uh, it, it'd be worth it in the future when it comes, if it becomes available again. And then the rest of the numbers, I don't want to rehash everything that's on there. Okay, any questions? That takes us to Chief Bennett. Evening, Chief. Uh, you have my report there. Uh, there was a question that was brought up today about animals at large, um, which I assume is from the number that's on the report. Uh, those are actually any time the county is dispatched to something. So the county runs all of our animal control in the city. Um, so any time a call comes out in the city, even if it's a miscellaneous for the sheriff's department, if it's if it's in the RGO code, it comes in as a city call. So we typically will get if there's an aggressive dog or something, we will respond to that being the closest entity. But it, usually, if it's an animal, it'll lose. Uh, it's usually the county that handles that. Uh, there are times that that we will transport there and then give them the information and and we'll check to see you know if they have city licenses or whatever and and we'll we'll cite those that don't. Uh, as far as the cats at large, I know there's a couple people downtown that are feeding stray cats, which we've we've discouraged in the past. 
um, and and continue to to discourage. But uh, there are a number of, of cats running around downtown that I've noticed. I don't know that there's as many dogs as we've had in the past, but uh, but the cats are, are an issue. I know when the uh, gym was open down there, the Iron or Great Greyhawk or whatever, they they had some program where they were collecting the cats and, and rehoming them and, and whatnot, but I don't believe that's in process anymore. Thank you for addressing that. Is there is there anybody in particular that I need to contact about that? No, sir. I'll take, okay. I'll take care of it. And I think that covered it. Thank you so much. Okay. And then, yeah, like I said, a few years ago, the county passed that tax that, that allowed them to build the kennel and everything, so they took over all the animal control for the, for the county, including us. That's so. great information. Thanks, Chief. Anybody have any specific questions? I think everything's going going fairly well. Uh, we're hoping to have uh, Officer Unverfirth, Unverfirth back. Uh, we're hoping that he'll get released in December to come back to, to work. So, um, you know, it's just kind of in, his, in the, the doctor's hands there, but we're hopeful. Uh, he, he was actually awarded a, a grant through a Running for Heroes uh, program. It's a national program, and, and they're coming down next week, next Tuesday, to, to present that, and then uh, Zachariah's run the following Wednesday up in St. Louis, so we're going to go up and be in the procession there and, and in some of the festivities up there, so so Officer Pete will be here for that, and, and we'll be up there for that also. Eric, I don't know, uh, can we talk about this now as far as the upfitting the police vehicles, or just had a couple questions. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I, I know this is kind of detailed and stuff and looks like times two, so this is completely up to what, what we can use, we do, but like cages and the, the racks and things like that that are, that are vehicle specific that are coming out of like the Taurus and the, the Explorers aren't, they, they're not compatible with other, other vehicles, but any siren box or siren speaker or light bar that we can use, we do, uh, but all of those things have a, have a shelf life also. Right. You know, so, um, yeah, we definitely try to reuse everything that we can. Radios, we, we typically will reuse as long as we can. Um, and then, like I said, consoles and all that are, are usually pretty vehicle specific, so. Do we also the stuff that we're not able to transfer? Like we, we surplus that and typically sell it to other agencies that are, that are needing that. Uh, the last few years, uh, the agency that have bought our cars off surplus have, have made an additional deal for whatever equipment we can sell with that. So, and typically we go off surplus prices for that. We contact the state surplus and see what they're selling their stuff for and and we'll we'll surplus it at that price. But these costs are not included in the lease of the vehicle. This is an over and above expense that you buy an item. No, 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 that's that's all, that, that will be all encompassing in the, the pop, uh, price of the lease. Oh, it is, okay. Yes, yes. So that, that's figured in. So the cost of the car plus the cost of the equipment and the upfitting is all is all figured in so the lease price that we pay will include everything that's right. in that. that's all i got thanks anything else all right Jeep. thank you steve <coughs> evening everyone hey, steve. uh i had mentioned in the past about a problem with the co2 tank at the water treatment plant uh it's the refrigeration unit that uh, allows the liquid to turn to a gas and, and feed through the treatment plant. Uh, that tank is, the, the blow off valves are leaking on it at, at this point. We've got a company coming in this week. Uh, hopefully you can get here tomorrow, if not, it'll probably be Monday um, to look at that unit. I don't know if it's gonna need a total replacement. I don't know what it's gonna need, but it's uh, currently leaking at this point. So, um, using about we used about six months worth of uh, CO2 in uh, about two months. So. Is that hazardous to any of the employees? No, it just gases off. It's no hazard to anyone out there. So. so I don't know. I don't know where we're going to end up with that, but that's that's coming. So, and I don't have prices yet until they show up. So. Uh, down at the wastewater plant, the UV unit uh, that, that was shut off and disconnected, uh, put into storage for the winter. Uh, that's only required to run until October 31st. So that system was shut down, cleaned, uh, put in storage for until April 1st. Um, we did have three main breaks, uh, one on Chadwell, one on 3rd Street, and one on... Yeah. Somewhere else. 7th Street. So, 
So lots of lots of temperatures going up and down. So to the season. So. Um, up in the park area, uh, we cleaned out the park garages, organized, uh, removed debris, trash, anything that's unuseful uh, was removed. Shops were organized, and um, and much more user friendly at this point. Um, soccer fields, we had to do those a couple quick times there at the end of the season for Valley. Uh, we got those done. We got a uh, got a nice thank you from Valley for uh, going out of our way, getting those completed. Um, it wasn't on the schedule, it was a schedule change on their part, so um, they appreciated it. Uh, street side, we did a few days of patching, uh, about 30 tons of asphalt was purchased, uh, put down potholes, streets, curbs, gutters, uh, anywhere it was deemed necessary. Uh, did get the new road on Main Street by the railroad, uh, Bowdens did a nice job on that. Um, also did some touch up work on Main Street uh, patching. Um, lots of the equipment repairs. We, uh, we've had the backhoe repaired, two lawn mowers, two dump trucks are in the process, uh, numerous small items. So. You said backhoe repaired the new one? Yes. Yeah, that one had a, uh, a blown air conditioner line, but uh, not so much for the air conditioner at this point, uh, so much as it is the defrost. So. Uh, cleaned up the brush site. Uh, I don't know if anybody was down there. You couldn't get down the gravel road. It was out so far. Uh, we ended up having the backhoe and the skid steer down there for three days. Uh, both equipment's running for eight hours each day and uh, finally got it in a little better shape. So. Steve, do we have any word from Cochran on our engineering process for moving that panel? And yes, uh, they're waiting for Tuesday, they're going to come down. They're going to look at all the components inside the panel. Uh, we had Citizens Electric come down when we had the problems, but now we have to have Citizens Electric come in and kill the power to the plant uh, so they can open the panels up safely. So once they get that information, then we'll know more. So the repairs we made are holding up, or holding up, just holding up. Yeah. I do, have, I do have one high contact uh, contactor on the high service pump number three. Uh, it's chattering very loud. We can run on high service pump two and keep number three on reserve. Um, in the event that we have to run it, it's there. But I, I'm, I'm being very reserved with it. So, so have they given us any time frame when they're going to? I don't think we'll know any more until they see what's in the panel. All right. Should be pretty quick because they're looking at what specific equipment needs to be in the specs. So that's all we have to wait to safely get in. Well, and Steve and Essenson, you're describing we have a panel that's in the same state as the panel was the day before. I mean, it's it's uh, it's unknown to us. Correct. Right. It was unknown to us the day of the incident. Correct. My staff doesn't touch the panel. They don't okay. work around the panel. They don't go near the panel. Okay. Is it flagged with anything? Like if you were to have somebody that wasn't aware of that situation that walked into the plant somehow? No, it's already in a painted yellow area. Okay. So. Nope. Okay. Very good. Any other questions? Thank you, Steve. All right. Thanks. Thank Chief Steiger. <laughs> Probably the biggest thing we got going on, the biggest scuttlebutt in town on social media is our big fires we've had recently. We had 17 calls in 14 days uh, with a total of three structure fires. We usually average five or six structure fires in a year, so that's like a half a year in just a couple weeks' time on us. To squelch any scuttlebutt on Facebook, they are not related in any way, even though they're within a few blocks of each other. They were all uh, causes determined to be operational failures of some kind or another so we do not have an arsonist running around or there's nothing nothing we're keeping from anybody it's just coincidence that that's the way it happened uh, on a happier note I do have one of my fireman's sons interested in being a fireman he's done the background check so we'll be putting him on shortly he's a college student so he'll be gone for school but he'll be living in town yet so we do have a guy coming in 
do have another guy that was supposed to show up the other day. He forgot it was deer season, so he didn't bring his application in yet. He should be bringing that in to us within the next week or two. So we potentially have a couple more guys that we'll be adding. But everything else is pretty much status quo. Open to any kind of questions. I forgot a lot of things in my life, but never deer season. Yeah. <laughs> well, Bob, do, do we need to still get together and discuss? Well, I was going to try to catch him after the meeting yeah. and stuff. We haven't got together, you know, the three of us, but we're looking for participation maybe from you and some direction. Yeah, I've, I've actually got a couple of my firefighters I've talked to that want to be on the committee too. Sure. So we got one of our younger guys and a guy that deals with unions and labor and stuff like that. So he's got some background in it. So, and I'm, I was talking to Alderman Rainey the other night. I might, wouldn't even mind seeing a couple of uh, civic people involved in it, a couple of citizens too, get some input from the citizens. But yeah, we, I'm ready and willing to start anytime. I can give you a copy of my schedule and we can work something out. Sure. I know Happy and Paul is also uh, asked to be on that committee and stuff, so we'll be glad to. Yeah. You know, Just let me know when and where. <laughs> Probably the easiest thing to schedule is our Wednesday nights because we're out there every Wednesday night. But we'll, we can work out something on the schedule and we'll, we'll definitely need to get going, get meeting. Kenny, you mentioned we've had six months worth of fires in a matter of a couple of weeks here, but I mean, this was three total losses. Yeah. We don't have five or six total losses. And there was some extenuating circumstances in the fires. The first one, after I called the State Fire Marshal in because of the explosions, which I wanted to hire authority than myself with more experience investigating, uh, there was a natural gas leak in the basement that was determined. So it caused it to burn quicker and heavier than what a normal fire would. Plus the construction style in that being a story and a half, there was a lot of what we call knee walls with hidden voids and things. So it was traveling behind walls that we had to tear out to get to that one. The uh, one down off of Gabri was because of the age of the house and it had a real good start on us because of a malfunction in a vehicle that caused it to hit the outside of the house and took off. We got there pretty quick. I was actually only a minute from the firehouse and had the first truck on scene within six or seven. It just was that much fire that we couldn't stop it. And the last one, mobile homes are always horrible about fires when they get started, especially in the 70s era. Most of those have two by two stud walls instead of two by four. So it doesn't take much to burn through those and burn them out. Uh, I was actually at work that night, but when I came home, I saw it. And I was actually impressed with the job my guys were able to do to stop it where they stopped it, because there was still a portion of the trailer that was would have been survivable if we would have had to do a rescue. That's the key word, survivable. Yeah. Any other questions? Thank you, Chief. Thank you. David? Last but not least. Absolutely. Good evening. Uh, I just got a report there. Uh, we did have our uh, Heritage Commission meeting this week. I typed up this report before that, so the COA that was on the agenda there was approved. Um, you can get the numbers there on the Building Dep Department and Code Enforcement. I would add that as we continue the code process to transition, um, the NEC, the electric code we follow, is on opposite years, so that'll be a 2020 update um, that will probably come to you uh, at some point early next year, uh, whereas the, the other codes are 2018. Um, the apartments on Portis were granted occupancy this week, so just wanted to give you that update. And then uh, we do have a new house going up in Valley Spring uh, now. Uh, under rental housing, uh, for folks who go online to use that, that has been updated. So there's new information posted there on the city's website. Um, under P&Z, uh, you can see we did have our meeting on the 9th and there'll be two special use permits brought to you tonight for approval that the uh, planning and zoning has approved recommendation board of adjustment had a meeting uh last week also and approved a set by front setback variance that's about all i have unless you have any questions all right thank you very good thank you all Takes us down to our COVID discussion. Still need to keep that on there. I don't know. <clears throat> Numbers are starting to go back up, so a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Let's let's keep it. We'll keep it on there. We don't have anything to report though. Okay. So I think I seen somewhere there were 19 new cases. 
day before yesterday. Yeah. yeah. So in, in, in town? Yeah, county. but there was like four county. or five zeros that we day, days before. And so our count is still at two daily, three. So we're not up to a point where we worry about masks, masks again. But we're getting into the holiday season. People are getting up to work indoors. Okay. Keep looking after. So. Yep. Any committee reports? Park board meeting on Monday. Monday the 22nd? Yep. You're, you're uh, meeting here now. Yeah, we're going to meet here. Um, our newest member um, would be best able to attend via Zoom um, currently. So we're going to meet here so we can use the Zoom features. Um, and then that will open up for the public to mm -hmm. attend from home if they want and uh, make it a little easier on uh, the local TV station. Okay. Uh, building committee met with uh, Steve Bacon, went through some of the design features we're looking at. Uh, most of the discussion was on the need for a large HVAC system to, to carry this room in the summertime when it heats up so much. Uh, that's probably where our biggest cost is going to come from. But we talked about arrangement of furniture, walls being removed, uh, access from our doorway in the back. So Windows. Windows. We may look at replacing these windows. Uh, well, they're so nice. And that would be an ad alternate, and also would be a requirement to go to the historic, the historic uh, uh, committee to, to look at. So there's a number of hurdles that we'd have to go through on that. But um, and we might even replace the carpet. I'm not sure. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, New duct tape. Yeah. Right. That's right. Gorilla tape. Can we uh, do something about the wasps and the lights too? And well, zombieants, no. If, if we would take care of our, our roof, we might be able to, yeah. Take care of the wasps. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we should get something back here in, in a few weeks. Uh, you, you've got the uh, contract agreement with uh, Mr. Bacon and the uh, as our addend as our uh, agenda addendum, mm -hmm. uh, but we're figuring getting a set of plans for the committee to look at again probably. Maybe middle of December. That it? Takes us to uh, public comments. We have some public comments. Good evening. My name is Ron Klein. Hello. I met a couple, about a month ago. So uh, primarily I had, I wanted to see if there's any questions in regards to a letter that I sent to Happy and copied the mayor and and Buck and, and Bob Alderman, uh, Joe Kirsten Dunneman, on some concerns I have with, uh, again, the creek that goes by the house, carries a lot of storm water. There's a few trees uh, near my detached garage that uh, are washing out at, at the root, and they've, they've got the liens, and I've got some concern about those potentially falling over. Actually, the, the trunk of the tree might be good to leave there to help hold the bank, but um, there's a they're pretty pretty large. So anyway, I, I just if there's any questions on that uh, from those that had a copy, I sent some photos as well. I could certainly answer them. I mean, you can contact me anytime, but I thought I'd come down and visit. Um, so that's the primary reason. And then the earlier discussion sounds like that uh, the storm water that our neighborhood's concerned with, you're looking into getting a, a study done. That's very much appreciated. Um, we met with Alderman Donovan uh, the other night and talked about, keep in mind, I am not an engineer, uh, especially a civil engineer, but talked about what appears to be maybe some short-term solutions to help the issue. So uh, any consideration to that would be appreciated as well. Um, but back to my letter, any questions, comment? I, I, I see that Jokers, uh, Alderman Jokers isn't here, but... Okay. So again, uh, your attention to the stormwater is really appreciated. Um, if we could, we'll do our best to keep up to speed on that. And uh, if I can help, feel free to contact me or, or whoever is in charge of it, because I'll do what I can. So okay. that's it for me. Thank you, Rob. Thanks, Thanks Rob. for your time. Anybody else? I think stormwater is the hot topic, right? <laughs> so. I was here oh, a couple of months ago. My name's David Schwartz. I own the multi-tenant commercial building across from McDonald's. Um, and again, I kind of did some research. So I was here last time. I got a little bit more information I wanted to share. 
Wasn't exactly sure of the process I needed to go to to get in front of you guys again, but happy to inform you before the meeting that I needed to come during a work meeting, I guess to maybe figure out if, if we want to do some work on this problem or, or what, but I just wanted to share with you guys that since the last time I found the, uh, the maintenance agreement that was set in place, um, found out that Portage Street was redone around 2013, the stormwater inlets or outlets, I guess, that drain the street are what's dumping into this ditch, causing the erosion. When the city did that, when they redid Portage Street, they riprafted the side of the ditch to help support the water. Um, and that's where I believe the maintenance contract came into place. So what has happened now is the riprap that was placed by the city when they redid Portage Street at the outlets of the, the storm sewer is what's caught directly across from there is where the riprap that the city placed is coming down, causing the hillside to erode. So before I just kind of, I didn't have a lot of the information I have now. I mean, I have some pictures as well. Um, and anyone's free, obviously, to go to go see it. But you can see where they put the outlets in from the Port of Street to handle the, the, the water, the storm water. And directly across from there is where we're having the issues. So I just wanted to be brought to you guys' attention that, to me, looking at it, and I think anyone would agree, that the reason I'm having the problem is because of the outlet of the storm water system that was put in when they redid Port of Street. Um, I did get some bids. I, I'll save them for the work meeting because I have some more coming through. Uh, but I just, I didn't want to blindside anyone. I didn't want to blindside happy. I came in ahead of time. I just wanted to come up here and kind of give some comments so you guys can maybe talk about it or we could prepare for the work meeting next time. So does anybody have any questions or comments for me? Uh, just maybe one day where yeah. that uh, water comes out there, I mean, uh, does that kind of come out there as a 90 degree angle to the flow of the It does. Street? There's two outlets. Out of, and, and they, and again, if you go there and look at it, you'll be able to see exactly where the city put the riprap on the opposite side to help support the bank, which was the right thing to do, but it just didn't, you know, eight years, nine years, and the stormwater we've been having, it just didn't hold up. So now it needs a little bit of, of maintenance. So, uh, but I will return at a work meeting so we can and that's discuss what we'll do. We'll, yeah, we'll discuss it more in the work rather than. Yeah. So okay. appreciate the comments, and then we'll, we will deal with it, and we'll line up a little. Yeah, December this is 9th. December 9th, we're going to do the work. Is, is that December, December 9th? 9th? December 9th, yeah. okay. Okay, right. thank yeah, you. After a meeting. Okay, thank you. How you doing? Rick Figgy. Right. I'm just kind of concerned about the, you guys are maybe possibly talking to an engineering firm. Has it ever been done before? I mean, we uh, uh, of stormwater or anything. Have, has anybody ever looked into? Is there a report from the '70s, '80s that could be compared to, or does anybody know of anything that's ever? The only report that we know of that we've got on file is the um, Cedar and and Park area working towards uh, uh, Center Street. That's the only one that I know of. Okay. I don't think, I don't so think there has been all the year, all the years we never pursued any kind of an engineering report or anything from that? Not to anybody's Not knowledge. You, now that we've come across know. from digging in our files. Okay. All right. That, that's basically all I was kind of concerned yeah. about. If there was ever been a report before. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other public comments? No other public comments. We'll move forward to the consent agenda. <clears throat> I'll second them. The first and second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Very good. Thank you all. So at 6.30 we will <laughs> conduct uh, our first public hearing. Uh, the mayor and the board will conduct a public hearing to consider requests from Jameson and Lin Lindsay Walker for a special use permit to allow guest lodging at 170 Serapin Street in an R2 general residential district. Good evening again. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Walker submitted an application on October 22nd. Uh, notice was sent to the applicant and the adjoining property owners on the 26th. Um, application sent to the police and fire uh, departments on the 26th. Received back uh, their recommendations on the 27th and 28th. <coughs> Meeting notice sent to the media on the 3rd. Uh, held P and Z on the 9th. 
They recommended approval by a vote, I believe, of 602. Um, and the notice was published in the paper on October 27th of both the PNZ meeting and tonight's meeting. Uh, at PNZ, we did receive one neighbor <coughs> comment. It was neither uh, positive nor negative, just pointing out that they would like to see off street parking, which is being provided, and um, their yard not used. So the Applicant is aware of that and said he will address it. So they were parking in the yard now? There was already parking there. The neighbor just wanted to make sure that that was continued and he would like to see that shored up. That is not, you know, did not come up in the PNZ meeting. Any questions? There's no questions, we'll end the meeting, the hearing at 632. <clears throat> so at 632, we'll do another, we'll start, open up another public hearing. Uh, the mayor and the board will conduct a public hearing to consider a request from Marshall and Jeanette Brock, Brockton for a special use permit to allow guest lodging at 409 LaComp Street in an R1 single family residential. So similar, another guest lodging application. Application received on the 13th. Uh, notice of meeting mailed to the applicant and property owners on the 26th. Police and fire on the 26th. Received back those the 27th and 28th. Meeting notice sent to the media on the 3rd. Um, the the uh, hearing and the PNZ meeting were published in the paper on the 27th. PNZ met on the 9th. Recommended approval again, I believe 602. And that is what you are receiving tonight. And Mr. Brodigam, well, actually, both parties are now on the screen. But Mr. Brodigam is also on the screen behind you if you have any questions for him. Nope. But I do have some, a couple general questions for David while he's at the podium. Kind of regarding this. Just to clarify, do we keep a running list of the guest lodging properties? Yes. Okay. And then in the city limits. Within, yeah, within the city limits. And then uh, these are non-transferable special use permits. So if right, if like we grant it to this uh, property owner and they decide to sell, they can't necessarily sell it as a. If, if the next person wants an Airbnb to do it as an Airbnb, do they have to reapply for the city? We or? can certainly write that in, though it's not as it's being presented to you. Typically. I mean, there's, I can go one of two ways. Special use does travel sometimes with the property, sometimes with the owner. Yeah. I'm just curious in general, not necessarily specific to either of these properties. Okay. Any other questions? There's no other questions. We will close the public hearing, second public hearing at 634. Thank you, David. Thank you. <coughs> Takes us to old business. This is a second reading of Bill Number 4456, an ordinance approving a zoning change from an R1 single-family residential to a I2 general commercial district for a portion of 175 Coyne Street. Coyne Street. Motion to approve. Second. Have a roll call, please. Alderman Smith. Yes. Alderman Donovan. Yes. Alderman Eisen. Yes. Alderman Laney. Yes. Alderman Alder Stanford, five yes, zero no's, three absent. Bill number 3456 now becomes ordinance 4377. Thank you very much. Takes us to new business. Uh, bill number 4458, an ordinance calling for the general election of officers of the city of St. Genevieve, Missouri to be held April 5th, 2022, and providing notice to the general public. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion for a second reading of bill number 4458. Second. All in favor of that? Aye. Aye. The second reading of bill number 4458, an ordinance calling for the general election of officers of the city of St. Genevieve, Missouri to be held April 5th, 2022, providing notice to the public, the general <coughs> public. Motion to approve. Second. Have a roll call, please. Alderman Ongerster. Yes. Alderman Laney. Yes. Alderman Eisen. Yes. Alderman Donovan. Yes. Alderman Smith. Yes. Five yes, zero no's, three absent. Bill number 4458 now becomes ordinance 4378. Thank you. 
Next is to the first reading of Bill Number 4459, an ordinance of the City of St. Jennings, Missouri, authorizing the mayor to enter into a letter of agreement and scope of services with SEMO Regional Planning Commission for an update to the St. Genevieve Comprehensive Plan. I'd like to have a, just a brief discussion about that and stuff. Um, <coughs> you know, when this takes place and stuff, I mean, uh, we're not bound by any of these things that they come up with. These are just merely the long-term plan, possibly? You should, if you're going to, going to adopt stuff, you should follow what it says. So if you're looking at future land use, you should follow what that future land use recommends. If you're going to put in future roads, you really want to try to develop those new roads or extensions or whatever. But I mean, we have a comprehensive plan now that hasn't been fully implicated, correct? It's been fully implemented. It's just, oh, it is? it's referred to. Yeah, we look at it whenever we have something come before planning and zoning, and we see if it works <coughs> or follows you know, what, what we feel is the intent of that of the, of the plan, but it is way out of date. Right. But I mean, all of those items in there we haven't put into place. That's correct. Mm -hmm. No, well, and I don't think any city does, but right. it gives you a roadmap. It gives you a guide yeah. anyway. As you, as yeah. It's just like us right. doing our park plan. You know, you want something to, sh right. you know, it's a it sets your goal mm -hmm. for your futures and, yeah. and what you're working toward. So. I'm going to make a motion to approve. <coughs> I'll, I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Looking for a second reading. Second. All in favor of that? Aye. Aye. Very good. This will be the second reading of Bill Number 4459, an ordinance of the City of St. Genevieve, Missouri, authorizing the mayor to enter into a letter of agreement and scope of services with SEMO Regional Planning Commission for an update to the St. Genevieve <coughs> Comprehensive Plan. Motion to approve. Second. So roll call, please. Alderman Donovan. Yes. Alderman Smith. Yes. Alderman <coughs> yes. Alderman Rainey. Yes. Alderwoman Armbruster. Yes. Five yes, zero no's, three absent. Bill Number 40. 459 now becomes ordinance 4379. Thank you. Takes us to the first reading of bill number 4460, an ordinance approving a special use permit for Jameson and Lindsay Walker that will allow guest lodging at 170 Seraphim Street. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion for a second reading of bill number 4460. Second. All in favor of that? Aye. Aye. Uh, this is the second reading of Bill Number 4460, an ordinance approving a special use permit for Jameson and Lindsay Walker that will allow guest lodging at 170 Seraphim Street. Motion to approve. Second. Roll call, please. Alderman Rainey. Yes. Alderman Armbruster. Yes. Alderman Eidman. Yes. Alderman Donovan. Yes. Alderman Smith. Yes. Five yes, zero no's, three absent. Bill Number 4460 now becomes ordinance. 4380. Thank you. First reading of Bill Number 4461, an ordinance approving a special use permit for Marshall and Jeanette Brodigan that will allow guest lodging at 409 Lacombe Street. Motion. Go ahead. Motion to approve. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion for a second reading of Bill Number 4461. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Second reading of Bill Number 4461, an ordinance approving a special use permit for Marshall and Jeanette Brodigan. That will allow guest lodging at 409 Lacombe Street. Motion to approve. Second. That roll call, please. Alderman Ivan. Yes. Alderman Rainey. Yes. Alderman Donovan. Yes. Alderman Smith. Yes. Alderman Armbruster. Yes. Five yes, zero no's, three absent. Bill number 4461 now becomes ordinance 4381. Thank you. Takes us to the first reading of Bill Number 4462, an ordinance of the City of St. Genevieve, Missouri, amending the personnel manual as set forth below. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Very good. Thank you. Takes us to the first reading of Bill Number 4463, an ordinance of the City of St. Genevieve authorizing the City Administrator to enter into an agreement with Bacon Commercial Design for the architectural and engineering services for the remodel of the board of boardroom in an amount not to exceed $5,400. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Motion for a second reading of Bill Number 4463. Second. second to that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Second reading of Bill Number 4463, an ordinance of the City of St. Genevieve authorizing the City Administrator to enter into an agreement with Bacon Commercial Design for the architectural and engineering services for the remodel of the board room in an amount not to exceed $5,400. Motion to approve. Second. Roll call, please. Alderman Smith. Yes. Alderman Donovan. Yes. Alderman Eidman. Yes. Alderman Rainey. Yes. Alderman Officer. Yes. Five yes, zero no, three absent. Bill number 4463 now becomes ordinance 4382. Very good. Thank you very much. Is there any other business? Is there any other communication? If there is no other business, I will. Uh, um. Oh, just a quick comment and stuff. She could probably tell by the number of people that were here tonight about storm water. Um, you know, that's why I kind of pushed the uh, conversation a little bit about looking at an expertise firm, looking at the best deal we can get. Um, you know, there's, there's, this affects a lot of people and stuff, and I think there's a growing concern uh, about this. And I think it's something we need to take very seriously. Uh, so, I mean, it, it, it's a problem and we need to address this appropriately. Well, I totally agree. And it probably should have been looked at 20 years ago. Nobody we had, and so now's the time. It's, it's ended up in our lap to do this. It's, I'm going to tell you, it's, it's going to be quite expensive and it's going to be a challenge. So, I don't know about you all, but I'm up for the challenge. So, we just, you know, it's going to take a lot of work. So. Happy, is this something if, if we come up with this plan and, you know, whether the survey is pretty expensive or, and then we approve taking the next step and, and spending the money to do that to get a plan, you know, then to implicate some of this. I mean, you know, I know we're probably, we're all guessing it's going to cost a lot of money and stuff. I mean, is this stuff? something that could be covered by a bond issue or so first of all we're gonna have a work session on this and it's not on the agenda so we're gonna end it right now <laughs> good question don't, don't, it's a good question three in a row for me Paul. <laughs> <laughs> i gotta keep up my yeah <laughs> so if there's no other comment or anything else then i will call this meeting adjourned thank you Agenda. Motion to approve. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's all yours, Happy. All right, so now we're heading out on tour, folks. We're going to do uh, the fire department, welcome center. We'll go by the park house um, and then see if you want to. We'll walk through the unfinished police department or you can wait until it's done. At this point, it looks like it's about another month away. We just got the cabinets and uh, uh, desktops. No, I'm sorry, the countertops. Still got some flooring used to go in some of the so we'll go to the fire department first. Uh, David and I will be driving. Do you want to ride with us or do you want to drive yourself? You're coming back here. And we'll eventually yeah, come back here. No, we're just going to drop you off. I'll make sure everything's good.